Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblumen. You're watching the Theo Nightly video for the 20th of August here in 2020. And it might not look like it, but the S&P reversed the bear morning. I think in terms of the main indices, the volume profile levels are working for us on the intraday trade. But don't forget this, the NASDAQ pushed all the way, not just a little bit, but majorly to new all-time highs. That's on the strength of the titans of tech, or our monsters of tech. This is our Theo trade symbol. And the way we calculate it, it's just the way Don does the weighting of the top five stocks in the NASDAQ. Beyond that, the Dow mini futures, the Dow Jones index, still stalls at this 28,000 roundy, which is our key pivot point. We'll go into volume profile. That's what these yellow and red lines are. And the Russell, which is tied mainly towards small cap stocks, but also financials, XLF in this case, it's not only well beneath the high, but it's down trending from 1600. So I don't want to be cliche and call it a tale of two markets, but in terms of our indices, the Russell is peeling back right as expected and is, is logical from overhead resistance. The Dow Mini Futures, the Dow itself, Dow Jones 30 Index, peeling back from resistance as expected. So those two are doing what the probability suggest. The S&P, if you think of it on a short-term basis, that's doing what it suggests. It's just the NASDAQ keeps getting stronger. And that is in large part because of, I actually have a little fang stock right here. You can do this yourself. All it is is putting the stocks and I have a four grid, and that's just right here under uh, the Thinkorswim platform. You can create as many charts as you would like, but I'm doing four. It's kind of hard to put five. So uh, you will have to change Amazon to Apple if you're curious about how plotting all of them plays into it. But nevertheless, the tech stocks are famous fangs, financials, uh, Facebook, actually not the financials, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and I know, putting in Tesla. These are just strong tech stocks that keep getting stronger. But that's the logic. That which is strong does tend to get stronger. That which is uptrending does tend to keep uptrending, but it doesn't usually do it like this. And that's where I think the confusion, frustration, and some of the losses on the short side or the put side or the defensive side or the hedge side has happened because we haven't really seen a decent pullback. Now, if you are an intraday trader, that's not necessarily the case. So what I show here is the volume profile on the S&P futures with a 30 minute chart and a 10 day look back. It's just a default indicator. And I'll take everything else off the chart so we can just see the volume profile. Though you would get this, it's just type in volume profile or just scroll around any number of volume indicators here on the Thinkorswim platform. I use the default. So all it does is shows us similar to the weekly expected move that uses option volatility. This just uses volume and price. This yellow line is one standard deviation above and beneath ultimately the mean. But see these little kind of these cyan, blue, green, whatever the color is type of bars. These are volume bars that take place at a particular price level. So price and volume are important to making short-term trading decisions. We want to see volume in this case right here, green volume rise as price rises. That's what we might call a confirmation. And that suggests continuity, which means the future should keep going up. That's not the case when you get a non-confirmation or volume starts to trail down. That's what we're seeing. And that does continue to tip the odds to the downside, the sell side, the put side. But the NASDAQ just, I guess, did not get the memo today. So let's just compare and contrast what these levels mean and how the trades set up. So if we're looking at the price above the yellow, that does have a favorable advantage to go short. If you're seeing the market or the price beneath the yellow, that has a favorable advantage to go long. On the 30 minute profile, it's just a short term type of trade. 
and these will lead to put or call positions, bull spreads, call spreads, put spreads, verticals or in outs is probably the easiest thing to do just for a week, week and a half, maybe two weeks in duration. This is true for stocks and it's true for ETFs. Advantage bears up here, advantage bulls down here. So the S&P makes sense. It's logical why we got to push down. Would have loved to have seen it go lower, but it did play within the short-term profile levels. The Dow mini futures took longer than expected, but they did get down to this lower yellow area. And that makes sense, or at least puts today's rally into a larger context, a context of probability of a gravitational pull away from the top yellow toward the red average, which is the, we'll call the point of control. And that's just where the most bars of volume has taken place at a price level. It is like a short-term magnet. And when the market's beneath that magnet or gravitational point, think of it like, I like to think of like a rubber band or a magnet short-term, then the market does get pulled back into it. So things are working, I hate to say well, because the markets just keeps going up, but the Dow mini futures, even we can look at the DIA for tradable on the ETF, and of course the Russell. So things are working out there in terms of moving down away from above the upper yellow, down toward the red beyond, and bouncing off the yellow. Not the case in the NASDAQ. Leading stocks, we can see how that plays into it too. So you can play individual stocks. Here is PayPal and see the short-term advantage to go bearishly or cap profits, take profits from a move from the beneath the yellow to the upper yellow and lots of ways you can use this. This is not the only way to use the profile. Uh, nevertheless, this gives structure a context to things that may seem confusing or frustrating. It is the logic of a bell curve, a standard distribution type of setup, like a bell curve, really. So when the market's above, that favors the downside to pull back toward the mean. And when it's beneath it, it favors the market pulling back or trading up toward the mean. This is mean reversion or reversion to the mean 101. Does it always work? No, but it's the same type of logic that we're having in weekly expected moves. More than not, weekly expected moves contain the price. When they don't, it can lead to breakouts. There's where the risk twist spreads play in. That's where the back ratio profit when the market pushes and trades outside the expected move. But more than not, it will trade within those parameters. And that's been the case recently in the S&P. So that's the same logic, same logic for the profile. Now. Outside of that, we just have to deal with the reality that the tech sector specifically, and I'm showing the weekly expected moves, but going back to our chart, the tech sector, which is XLK, is and remains strong. The NASDAQ is and remains strong. The Qs, which we can trade on an ETF basis or options in the Qs, short-term swing trades or puts and call spreads, they just remain strong, and that's in part because the monsters of tech remain strong. But I've been showing scans of other stocks that are also trending up. So we'll update this trending stock scan. It's good, right? We, we can trade multiple things, multiple products, and focus on different opportunities, but it's a crowded trade. A lot of people are catching wind, if they haven't already, to the strength and technology, and yes, we can ride the coattails of the marching bull, but there are other things happening outside the market and not all of them are bullish. Some of them are actually quite bearish and that's being glossed over or missed by a lot of traders. So keep that in mind as you're looking at your charts, your, your studies, anything you do for homework or individual stock plays. It's not all bullish despite the fact that the NASDAQ and Qs and the XLK are making all-time highs. In fact, it was the only sector up today, which is quite interesting. It just shows a rotation of money within the market itself. But there are still stocks making new 52-week highs. 
they include common names that I reference as many times as possible within these videos or during sessions. So all this is, is a stock list in the S&P 500. You can change it to the NASDAQ or change it to the Dow or other indices like the Russell, if you would like. And the way you would change that is go inside the watch list right here, scan in and just change what you would like to do. The NASDAQ, the Russell, the Dow. The Dow is only 30 stocks, so that might not give you a lot of candidates. But these stocks are making new all-time highs. In some case, this is a scan for 52 week highs. Apple keeps popping up on the list. Adobe, Synopsys, Salesforce, and of course my favorite, McCormick. But also Target, DR Horton, and some other names too. Colgate Palmolive. These are staples. These are boring. These are stuff you probably aren't thinking about. And that's kind of the point. They're slowly, gently creeping their way to the upside and giving opportunities to trade in that direction. And that's especially if you do not like trading something like, oh well, yeah, my, you, know, you might like trading volatility, but if you're more like me, I like calmer stocks. I like stocks that don't move $100 in one day. Because if I had a put on right here, which is the logical and probabilistic thing to do, that's a market grossly overextended. We can't help but short that but it just didn't work. I don't like this. This is not what I like in terms of being a trader, is trading things that don't seem to make sense, things that are overbought, things that just keep going, and they neither give me entries to short nor go long. So little boring stocks might help with that. But nonetheless, keep in mind that there are weaknesses and cracks beneath the market that's being glossed over by the tech sector, which is a large market cap, yes. But there are other things happening in the market that are giving opportunities to savvy traders looking beneath the flashy, exciting stocks. As always, be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with tonight's Theo video for August 20th, 2020.